On today's episode, chip shortages hobble more auto production, the arms race for battery production dominance, and heavy equipment makers are post-COVID optimistic. Today's episode is brought to you by Engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on Engineering.com TV today. COVID-19 related supply chain issues are affecting manufacturing everywhere, but nowhere as seriously as the automotive industry. Ford has just released first quarter results and the global semiconductor shortage is a significant factor in production rates. The part shortages are not only slowing production, they're backing up the rest of the supply chain, adding to inventories and work in process. Despite strong earnings, Ford's adjusted free cash flow in the first quarter was minus $396 million, primarily due to semiconductor-related supply issues. Ford noted that a fire at a Japanese supplier plant in March was an additional factor in the chip shortage. These shortages come at a time of increasing consumer demand with recent new product launches of the Mustang Mach-E SUV, the new Bronco, and the company's cash cow redesigned F-150 pickup. With production disrupted, Ford is looking at different ways to minimize the impact, notably by changing the sales process. The company is promoting online vehicle sales in collaboration with dealers to maintain sales volumes with lower than normal dealer inventory levels. Both Mach-E and the new Bronco were available for order long before the first vehicle shipped, a trend popularized by Tesla, who maintain low vehicle inventory levels with their direct-to-consumer sales model. Ford estimated a 10 to 20% reduction in manufacturing volumes due to the semiconductor problem late last year, and now estimates that the company will lose 50% of second quarter production due to the shortages. The company expects the problem to ease in the second half, but the financial hit has been significant. Ford states that the problem has the potential to reduce the company's full year adjusted earnings before interest in taxes by between one and two billion dollars. Expect Ford and other automakers to diversify their supply chains significantly post-COVID. While the auto industry is a major component of the American economy, the off-road equipment industry well, it's the canary in the coal mine for future U.S. economic performance. Major investors like Warren Buffett watch equipment manufacturers because strong demand for construction, mining, forestry, and agricultural equipment like tractors, cranes, and bulldozers were the real-time indicators of increasing economic activity. The U.S. trade group for the industry, the Association of Equipment Manufacturers, have released a comprehensive survey of market sentiment by corporate executives in the sector. Fully 88% of respondents expect a positive outlook for 2021 and 55% expect sales to increase or remain stable despite the dual impact of COVID-19 and supply shortages of critical components like semiconductors and tires. Despite this optimism, reported sales figures show the impact of COVID. 19% report increased sales while 36% indicate sales are stable. 45%, however, report that sales are down, setting supply chain disruptions, delayed or canceled state and local level infrastructure projects, and lower international sales due to COVID-related travel restrictions. Interestingly, when asked to rank the biggest challenges for 2021, the expected top two, COVID-19 and labor shortages, were followed by regulatory challenges, tariffs and tax code changes, and internal reorganizations, with supply chain disruption ranking sixth on the list. Are equipment manufacturers less susceptible to supply chain issues than automakers? Well, the survey suggests this, and industry executives' responses about the impact of COVID-19 track those of other manufacturing industries. 80% feel that COVID-19 will have a permanent impact on the way we work. 45% reported productivity increases with remote work during COVID, while 36% reported decreased productivity. And the predicted wave of retirements due to COVID-19? Only one in five declared that the pandemic has caused them to consider early retirement. With the ongoing manufacturing labor shortage, that's probably a good thing. Global heavyweight ABB's robotics and discrete automation business has commissioned a report from Ultimedia on global electric vehicle battery supply chains, and the results suggest that the automotive industry worldwide may be headed toward a major supply bottleneck in the future. According to the report, lithium-ion battery technology will remain the industry standard for the foreseeable future, with battery cost the primary factor in the rate of replacement of internal combustion engine vehicles with electric platforms. The $100 per kilowatt hour price estimate for vehicle cost parity with fossil fuel vehicles is attainable, but COVID-related supply chain issues are compounding existing problems with battery raw material supply and pricing, particularly lithium. Despite component shortages and input supply and price uncertainty, the report predicts 20% compound annual growth rates for global electric vehicle sales over the next 10 years. And with lithium-ion technology also supporting stationary power storage technology for the solar and wind power industries, production capacity will need to outstrip demand from the automotive industry worldwide. 
The report estimates that global capacity for lithium-ion batteries will increase from 450 gigawatt hours in 2022 to more than 2,850 gigawatt hours by 2030. With battery cost representing almost a third of the manufacturing cost of an electric vehicle, getting this part of the supply chain right is make or break for automakers, and the industry is pursuing different tactics for sourcing the batteries. Tesla is using a vertical integration strategy, investing upstream as far as lithium mining, while developing in-house cell and battery pack manufacturing capability. Mainstream automakers, however, are using joint ventures and long-term supply agreements with existing and new battery makers to lock in supply. The report notes that government incentives are not just a factor for consumers purchasing electric vehicles, but are major drivers for the battery industry as well. The report estimates that a fully integrated European battery industry, from raw materials to recycling, could be worth up to $300 billion a year in economic activity and create 4 million jobs. Asia leads the way in battery production, followed by Europe with America lagging as EV market acceptance lags other regions. 80 new plants are announced or are under construction, and battery manufacturing is predicted to become a 21st century arms race, with the winning region dominating auto production worldwide. Get your popcorn. Well, that's it for today's episode of This Week in Engineering, brought to you by Engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification bell for our next episode. For our deeper engineering series, visit Engineering TV for exclusive shows like Manufacturing the Future and Designing the Future not found in our YouTube channel. The links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.